Uh, without further ado, uh, we all know, colleagues, that we start our meeting with uh, our vision and mission of GDE. And I think this is one of the things where we remind each other about why we actually work for the department. The vision for, for all of us is to make sure that the learner that we have in our midst or the ones that we have in front of us when we teach on a daily basis, they feel valued and inspired in our innovative education system. And how do we how do we plan on doing that in terms of our, our mission? We are committed to ensure that in 2022 we've got all functional schools and modern schools in our institutions and our communities where the quality education is provided for learners and learners they feel protected and they feel that all they are value uh, they are valued and there is equal uh, equi equitable education provided to them. Colleagues, this is just a presentation outline what's going to happen today. I think Mr. Kubai has done our first uh, uh, bullet there where we, he opened and he welcomed all the colleagues to the meeting. We're also going to talk about the meeting etiquette, but this one is just a reminder, colleagues. I know that most of the colleagues in our midst, they already know about this particular slide, but however, we've got some of the colleagues that sometimes they forget how to, you know, uh, behave when they are in a platform like this. This. So we just need to remind each other. It's like class rules. This is our meeting etiquette where we, we remind each other of what are the things that we need to do. I'll also remind the colleagues about the, our GET slogan. Uh, the reason why the slogan is important, it is what drives uh, our, 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 our band. Remember the GET band, it starts from grade four, it ends in grade nine. So as the department, we've got a slogan that drives us or the targets that actually uh, motivate us in order for us to perform even better. I'll also give the colleagues a motivational talk. Um, it's just something to, to pep you up so that uh, as you go along, you can actually make sure that you understand exactly what needs to happen. We'll also talk about the school calendar. This is just a reminder, colleagues, because remember, in all that we are doing, we need to be re reminded of time and we need to be cognizant as to how much time do we have left so that we can plan accordingly and we can also make sure that um, we are actually meeting our targets. We'll talk about the uh, subject performance. The reason why we need to uh, talk about uh, subject performance so that uh, we can make sure that um, uh, all the learners, uh, we can look back as to how we performed in the previous term, compare with how we had performed in 2021. We'll also remind the colleagues about our ATP as well as the program of assessment and uh, what are the challenges that we usually pick up when we uh, when we when we actually uh, visit schools uh, 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 in terms of the school visits? What are the areas that we feel that uh, uh, colleagues are still uh, having a challenge on? We'll also speak about um, I think uh, the project which is important for the grade five as well as the project in grade six, and then we'll do the announcements. And then we'll also do uh, the acknowledgement and then the conclusion that we are going to do. Uh, I hope the colleagues um, are going to have a, a, a good workshop as we are going along. And we're also going to go to the closure where we're going to open up for questions and answers. Uh, colleagues, without wasting of time, like I said, the meeting etiquette are quite, I'm just going to read what's highlighted that we should always remember that uh, our mic should be muted and we also have to if you want to talk to any of us either myself or mr gubai please text because uh, at some point i won't be able to see your your messages but mr gubai will and if you need to raise a question or you need to stop me perhaps to clarify something please ensure that you raise your hand and also make sure that you deactivate the cameras so that we can make sure that we do not interject with our presentation and um, last but not least, it says, please make sure that your cell phone is switched off and uh, stay uh, um, uh, focused so that whatever that we are going to be presenting, we can all uh, hear what we are talking about. And then what we need to do also, if there are two colleagues or more that are attending at a particular institution, you are all reminded that please make sure that you sign the register 
each individual or each member must make sure that they sign the register so that we can all um, be accountable for the colleagues that have uh, attended. Just moving right along, I'm going to talk about the GD, uh, GET band slogan. The reason why we talk about this, like I said earlier on, we have to remind each other about our targets and we have to remind each other about what are the things that drives the band that we are at. The first one is it says we must always remember to, that we need to be position one in our national assessments that we are taking part in as well as the national assessments that we do partake in and uh, we also have the subject average and our uh, our pass um our pass rate uh, is targeted at um 85 percent per grade so please colleagues when you're setting the target for the school please make sure that for the pass rate you are at 85 percent in terms or you can actually uh, set it up for instance if your school is already performing at 90 percent there's nothing stopping you to have 95 percent as your target uh, uh, pass rate but however it mustn't be below the district target which is 85 percent in terms of the subject average colleagues, our subject average as a social science uh, uh, subject, we are targeting that at least on a timely basis, we should at least uh, be achieving 55% of, uh, of, of, of our learners should be at 55%, which is our subject average so that we can make sure that the performance actually improves and it actually uh, uh, go to the next level. Just as a motivational talk, colleagues, um, we all know that we need to set goals and we need to work together. It says set goals for yourself, push yourself and move. Don't quit and no excuses and be aware you got this. This is just to motivate the colleagues in terms of um, as the term starts, let us uh, have the goals that us strive for the best in terms of our our performance. And also colleagues, we should remember that we should always work as a team. Uh, there's nothing, uh, you know, something is very disappointing when we go to a school where we've got quite a good number of colleagues that are in a school, maybe three or four. We find that one colleague is actually doing so great while the other colleagues are struggling. So please, colleague, let us remember that we need to work together in order for us to actually achieve better. So together, everything we can achieve more. So if we work as a team, we can actually achieve greater results. Now, colleagues, if I remind the colleagues in terms of the calendar, remember colleagues that in terms of the calendar, we have days, number of weeks that we have uh, per term. And we in that term also, we need to remember how many actual days that we've got. Initially, we had uh, 54 days that we had, but on actual, we had 52 days. Now, if you take 52 days and the number of days that we already utilized, we are at 39 days left before the term can end. So please, colleagues, the actual teaching days are actually minimum than what you can actually think of. So please, when you are planning, colleagues, make sure that you plan accordingly and make sure that the, 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 the task and the activities that needs to be done are done on time. So if you've got 39 days, that is literally less than six. If, if, if I'm not mistaken, it's less than seven weeks that is actually left now because we are actually in week three. So please, colleagues, when we're planning, let us plan accordingly and let us make sure that we are actually covering the content which is outlined for us. Now, on the next item that we need to discuss, colleagues, we need to look back in terms of 2020-21, term two, because colleagues, we do not compare apples with bananas. We need to compare the performance of term two last year and the performance of term two this year. In terms of the average, uh, uh, sub, uh, subject average, remember colleagues, we had said as a district provincially, it is at 65%. But in terms of our performance last year, we were at, at, at 63 in terms of the grade four. If you look at the subject average, which we had achieved 
this year we are now at 64 percent which means that the grade four has actually had improved in terms of the subject average they are now having a variance or they have a plus one percent a plus one percent colleagues is quite a, an achievement so i would like to thank the grade fours to make sure that in terms of the subject average they are actually improving in terms of the grade uh, of the pass rate uh, pass rate in terms of the grade four last year in term two we had 89 percent and we had maintained the performance of 89 percent in 2022 so there is no decline neither did we gain any percentage in terms of the grade four so thank you to the grade fours to make sure that quality teaching does take place and those learners they are performing to the level that they're supposed to be performing in terms of the grade five the percentage subject average was at 59 percent which is actually lower than um, uh, colleagues. Can I just uh, two minutes? Can I? I'm sorry, colleagues. We've got uh, two colleagues in one office, so uh, there's a bit, I'm sure you've heard the background uh, right now. Apologies for that, but we are trying to sort out to get uh, another room for another colleague so that she can also be in the NS Tech uh, uh, meeting. So apologies for that. Um, I'm going to continue in terms of that. Uh, I was actually mediating the past performance. Just one moment, colleagues. I, I we, we just. Uh, apologies about that, colleagues. You, like I said, uh, there is an NS Tech meeting running as well as the social science, and unfortunately, we both share the same office. So as I'm presenting, I'm actually uh, interrupting in the social, is it an NS Tech uh, meeting? Apologies for that. I was mediating the grade, is it the grade five? Uh, the grade five content in terms of the performance. So uh, the colleagues in grade five in terms of the subject average, there was no growth in terms of the subject, sub, subject average, hence they are still at the zero. Uh, there is no variance in terms of that, but however, in terms of the pass rate, you will notice that colleagues uh, in the grade five, the performance, they were at 86%. And they are still at 86% in term two. So thank you to the grade five colleagues for making sure that the performance doesn't drop. But however, we maintain our performance at 86%. But however, remember colleagues, uh, we had said, I just want to make the colleagues aware. We said in, in, in the subject average, we are supposed to be performing at 60 at um, uh, 55% and I'm glad to report that all three grades if you look at uh, uh, grade six uh, provincially we're supposed to be at 55 but last year in 2021 we were at 59% and this year there was a growth of 61% meaning that the grade uh, six they had improved there's an improvement of two percent and colleagues i must say a two percent improvement is quite a lot even with the pass rate the grade six have done outdone themselves because last year they were at 80 87 percent and this year they are now sitting at 89 percent which means that both in subject average as well as the pass rate the grade six had a growth of two percent uh in all aspect so in terms of this particular slide colleagues of our of our slogan remember we said pass rate should be at 85 percent and subject average should be at 55 percent now if we compare as to as johannesburg central now how far are we in terms of what the province has actually uh, uh, put against us you will see that as a province we had surpassed the subject average in terms of the province so as a as a district our subject average we had pushed it up a little bit to be at 65 percent because there is no need for us to be lesser than what we are currently performing so i would like to thank all the three grades for making sure that they are meeting the provincial targets but however we have not yet met the district 
targets, which is our 65% as the subject. So we would like to say the colleagues, please push harder. Remember, the more we push, like we said in our motivation, we can achieve greater results. In terms of, of, our, of our pass rate, remember colleagues, we had said in our GET slogan, it is 85%. And if you look at the subject across all three grades, we are above 80%. In fact, in grade fours, they had 89%, grade five, they had 86%, and the grade six, they had 89%, which means that we are actually above what the province has actually uh, set against us. So as a district, we had also pushed our pass, uh, uh, pass rate even further because our pass rate for the term, we are targeting to at least achieve a 90%. So we'll be happy if the colleagues can actually be performing at 90, 95% so that we can make sure that the we maintain the position that we are at in terms when we are actually compared with other districts in the province. So thank you so much with the performance that was done. It was a sterling job that was done in term two. And I'm sure the colleagues can attest that the learners, when it's time for them to write a test, it becomes difficult. So it shows that the colleagues are putting their efforts in when they are actually preparing those uh, mid-year uh, tests. So thank you so much. In terms of the annual teaching plan colleagues, the annual teaching plan, which was shared last year in 2021, it has not changed in 2022. It hasn't changed in term one. It hasn't changed in term two. It's not going to change in term three. So the topic that needs to be covered in grade four in terms of term three, between week one and week three, the grade fours are going to cover the topic of, four, of food and farming in South Africa. And they're going to introduce the learners to the topic of um, the types of food that people uh, get from plants and animals, the classification thereof. They're also going to introduce the learners to the types of uh, uh, food, the way that we actually get the food in terms of we either go and buy the food that we've got, grow it, collect it, fishing and hunting. And they're also going to cover between the three weeks, meaning that by the end of this week, the grade fours should have covered all these sub bullets or all these subtopics, the ways in which farming is actually done it can either be done for the fam uh, for 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 subsist uh, subsistence farming or it can be done for commercial farming where where farmers actually uh, grow food either in their towns or in their cities so that they can be able to sell to the community with the subsistence farming it is when you are actually growing uh, the food to make sure that you feed your own family so colleagues make sure that you cover all those aspects you 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 make sure that you cover everything that is outlined in that particular uh, uh, week and then in the following week which is now week 4 to week uh, 6 the grade fours are going to cover crops as well as stock farming and they are going to cover those sub bullets where, whereby they're going to look at the importance of crops and they're also going to look at the importance of um they're going to look at the importance uh, of a case study about fruit farming and they're also going to cover uh, the stock farming which is large stock as well as the small stock as well as the crop so all of those are crop farming and also those are case studying case studies and they're also going to share with the learners a, a map which is actually using the symbols uh, uh, to actually uh, locate the different regions that we have uh, that we, we use that we have in South Africa where different crops or different fruits or different um, whatever type of food that we have in South Africa is located. So please grateful make sure that all those topics are covered and make sure that you 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 cover all those topics and the last bullet in week four that the grade fours are going to cover it is processed as well as the unprocessed food where they're going to introduce the concept give the learners the examples and also in week seven they're also going to make sure that they they cover they cover the the the, the topic of um they cover the topic of unprocessed. So it's a continuation of what they've done in week six, where they are going to look at how and why food was processed in terms of they will include the drying process. They will include the squeezing, the cutting, as well as the mixing of when we mix food in order to preserve it. And then in week eight, 
the great uh, the great fours they're going to cover from farming to factory and uh, now they're going to look at the at the flow diagram and they're now going to finish up and wrap up everything and then in week nine colleagues please do not forget that we've got revision tests that needs to be administered across all three all, all three grades and also in week 10 it's a control test which must be a source based and it should include paragraph writing so moving along colleagues in the history grade uh, four you will notice that you'll notice that we we have uh, 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 we, we need to start. Uh, I forgot to mention in the grade uh, in, in the geography that the first thing that we have to remember when we are actually uh, uh, introducing the topic or at the beginning of every term, we should remember that at the beginning of the term, revision test needs to be administered for both discipline. You need to give back the feedback to the learners and make sure that the learners, they actually get uh, the feedback that uh, how did they perform last term and also if there is remediation that needs to take place please make sure that co uh, corrections are done and they are actually evident in the learner books we also like i said in the history we're going to start with the revision and we're also going to introduce between week one and week three which is this particular week colleagues we ensure that our learners they are actually uh, introduced to the topic of transport through time and the focus that we're also going to focus on are the different types of, of, of transport and how it had changed uh, people's life over 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 different uh, time uh, time frame for in for instance transport which was used on land transport which is used on water and transport which is used on air we're also going to touch base on um we're going to touch based on, 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 on the steam engine and the train. And that one is a case study, colleagues. Let us not forget that we need to make sure that we, 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 we cover that case study where we're looking at the environmental, the environmental, uh, 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 where we, we environmental damages, which is caused by, by the fumes that comes out of our cars, colleagues. So let us make sure that we cover all that that is covered on that particular uh, slide colleagues so i just want to remind the colleagues like i said this is just a reminder of what are the things that need to be covered in terms of the annual teaching plan we're also going to look in week seven it says we're going to look at transport in air where we're going to look at the the rights brothers and the invention of the first aeroplane that was actually uh, invented and in week um there's a typing error there, colleagues. That is week eight, week nine, and week ten. We're gonna look at the transport in air, where we're gonna talk about the 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 uh, the, the, the the air air, air air transport that we're gonna talk about to finish up the content that we have in uh in in in, in grade four uh, uh 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 history content. And then in week nine, we're gonna look at consolidating, making sure that we consolidate everything, and there's revision. And then in week ten. We are going to have the control test, which is a source based and there is paragraph writing. I must apologize colleagues in terms of the weeks there. There was a typing error. It will be amended before it can actually get to you before we share it with the colleagues. In terms of the grade uh, five colleagues, the geography, just like in the grade four, before you start introducing the new topic, you need to give the learners uh, feedback. You need to revise on the content which was done in the previous term and you need to make sure that you uh, give the learners their corrections and you make sure that the learners they actually understand the previous content before you can start with the new content and then you then introduce uh there's a colleague who's actually interrupting uh i uh i'm checking who I'm the checking. colleague is ma'am <laughs> For leaks who are having their mic on, can you kindly please mute yourself because you are actually interrupting the presentation as as we are trying to continue. Thank you so much, Mr. Kubai or the colleague if they've muted themselves. I'm not too sure who had assisted, but thank you, Mr. Kubai, for 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 actually fishing 
for the colleague that is interrupting. In terms of the grade uh, uh, five content geography, let us remember that we are covering weather and climate in South of South Africa. And then in week one, we introduce, we give the learners background information in terms of the weather and climate, where we are going to define the elements of weather, and we're also going to define the, the, the terminology of what is weather and what is climate, and we're going to speak about what are the elements that we actually uh, uh, use when we measure the, uh, the, the weather. And we're also going to introduce the learners as to how do we uh, measure the, 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 the temperatures you, uh, as well as the, the rainfall, which is pre precipitation in this instance. What are the units that we use and what are the instruments that we are actually using? We're also going to introduce the learners. How do we determine or how do we find out the wind direction and how do we describe it? Those uh, uh, weather symbols that we have on our on our on our different maps. And then we're also going to cut out one of the of, of, of the weather maps from any of the media. It can be from the newspaper or it can be from television where the learners are going to interpret the data that they're going to get from those weather maps. And then lastly, we're going to cover how does the weather affect our daily lives as human beings? For instance, today's temperature, if in your area it was raining, how did it affect you as a person? Did you Were you able to actually sit outside and, and, and enjoy the sun or were you actually indoors? What type of food were you able to eat and so forth that you're going to actually, how is the weather affecting us as humans uh, in our daily, uh, on, on, our, on our daily basis? How do we, how, how do we eat the temperatures, the type of clothes that we actually uh, uh, put on on a daily basis? Then between week four, which is starting next week, to week five, we then introduce the project, which is observation of the weather and recording independently. I'm going to take you through colleagues to the example of how we're going to do this project. It is does not only end with just observing and recording. It says observe the weather for two weeks and do the recording. Report on the temperature, report on climate, report on the precipitation, which is our rain. Also report on the wind in which direction does the wind uh, come from. You're going to use terminologies with your learners where you're going to, uh, when you're describing the temperature, you're either saying uh, the weather today, it was cold, it was warm, it was, you know, those are the terminologies that must be evident when you are recording with your learners. But we, like I said, colleagues, we're going to touch base or we're going to explain or even more further about this project on a later stage today. We're going to speak about it so that colleagues are clear of what to do when we start the week next week. And then it says observe and comment on how the weather affects us on a daily basis. We'll speak about that as well. Now, the uh, uh, week six and week seven, we then focus mainly on the rainfall. We're going to share with the learners different types of of maps, South African map that is showing the distribution of rainfall in South Africa, which province is receiving higher rainfall and the other uh, like the, 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 rain, the, the, the rainfall patterns. Some some provinces they have higher rainfalls, while other provinces they have uh, uh, less, uh, they are dry. They are actually more in a desert. And you will also find out that some of the uh, of, of the provinces they only receive rain in, in, in summer, while other provinces are receiving rain in winter, and some provinces, colleagues, they receive the rain throughout the year. You will notice that um, we've got a bit of change in our weather, in, in our in, in, in our in our weather uh, uh, patterns in terms of South Africa. We never had rain in August. I don't know if the colleagues are actually aware of that, especially uh, us as people who stay who stays in Gauteng. But off lately, we can see and we can notice that. We are receiving rain in, on some of the days. Yes, it, it is helping in terms of the dust coming down the dust. But however, we need to ask ourselves, what is it that us as, as, as people who live in a particular area, what is it that we are doing that is affecting the change in our weather? So we're going to give the learners a map that is showing distribution of, may, of, 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 of rainfall. We're going to talk about how is it, uh, why is it that different provinces I are experiencing different uh, rain uh, 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 variances. And also you're going to touch base. Remember in term two colleagues, you have 
uh, taught the learners about the build of South Africa, where some of the provinces are on the coastal plain, they are closer to the sea. You will notice that when you compare the temperatures as well, you will notice that it rains more in, say, in, in places, certain places which are closer to the coast than the places that are actually elevated or that are high up like us in Gauteng. We are actually elevated. We are actually located or uh, Gauteng is actually found on a plateau and a plateau we all know that it's actually high up on 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 the on the build of south africa and therefore it's a very dry area because it's a dry area we need to ask ourselves what is it that we are doing that is now changing we're no longer getting the rainfall mainly in summer but we are now even getting it in winter when we're still wearing our jackets and we're trying to get ourselves warm so those are the things and 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 the, and, and what you need to do with the learners in order to engage them and to also uh, make sure that the subject is interesting because because the learners now need to go home and they need to investigate what is it that they are doing what is it that us as human beings are doing on the daily basis that is changing our weather you're also going to make sure that you introduce the learners to the topic of climate because remember as they progress to grade six they're now going to now uh, differentiate between climatic regions they know now going to move from the climate just the, the terminology of climate the difference between climate and weather and now when they get to grade six you'll notice when we discuss grade six in the grade six content they they deal with the climatic regions which are the regions which are more hot the, the which are the deserts and which are the regions that are more tropical that has tropical for uh, tropical rainforest so you this is stem is stemming or it is a build up from the grade five content so please grade five make sure that the learners they understand this content so that when they get to grade six, a grade six teacher can actually uh, uh, go through with the, with, the, with the content and she doesn't have to reteach the content. So whatever that the grade five teacher is doing now is going to be a build up for the grade six in term, in term three. Also in week eight, in the grade five, we then talk about natural vegetation. But remember, the natural vegetation which is found in different uh, regions or different provinces. What are the plants that grows better in Gauteng and plants that grows better maybe in the Eastern Cape or in the Western Cape? We're then going to link those natural vegetation with the climate. Why is it that uh, alu would play would, would would grow better in the eastern cape then it will grow better in Gauteng. why is it that when you when you drive uh in the free state we usually uh, see the sunflower why is the sunflower growing in that province then so you look at the natural vegetation of a particular uh, province and you link it to the climate in terms of it survive you know um, uh, uh, plants like uh, the sunflower it's it can survive longer without having water so it, it has a, an ability of, of storing the water. Remember, colleagues, this is going to link up with the content that the learners are learning in natural science, because in natural science, they deal more about how does the plant survive in a dry area? So you see both uh, subjects, there's a link between a social science and an NS tech. So when you teach this, don't just teach, teach it in isolation or don't just teach it in, in, in silos as um, uh, uh, academics will call it. Please make sure that you collaborate with your NS tech teacher so that we can make sure that the learners are actually getting the, the content that they're supposed to get. We're also going to talk about how did how how are these plants adapting to the climate? How do they survive? Adaptation of those plants. How do they make sure that they maintain the lifespan that uh, they're supposed to have in a particular region? Remember, the, that would be, be determined by the type of weather, by the type of climate, which is actually uh, uh, dealt with. But in a, a grade five situation, we're only looking at South African plants. And now when they go to grade six, they then extend it to the world. Now they're gonna look at the different regions in different continents and look at what are these uh, natural vegetation in different regions? How are they surviving? In week nine, you do consolidation, you do revision. And then lastly, you are then going to make sure that in week 10, the learners are submitting your project. But like I said earlier, uh, later on, I will, I, will, I, will, I will deliberate more on the projects regarding the grade five.
And then in the history co colleagues, you give them the feedback like in the in the previous slides that I spoke about. You give them the assessment of term two. You do your corrections. You give them the feedback. You you remediate. Learners do corrections if need be. If they had some some of the que of the questions they got it incorrect, you you give them the corrections so that they they can you know build on their knowledge. Like I said, colleagues, whatever that we're teaching. Uh, in the lower grade, we should remember that that content is still going to be a built up for the next grade. So don't say uh, because uh, uh, term two is never going to be written anymore in this term, then you think that uh, now because uh, they are going to the next grade, I, the next grade teacher is going to actually uh, uh, see to finish. Please make sure that you remediate. If there are gaps that you identify in, in, in curriculum uh, coverage, or in curriculum delivery, make sure that you remediate that. It does not matter whether the term is already passed. Remember the content, there is progression in the content. So the learners need to understand the content uh, completely. And then in between week one and week three in grade, in grade five, uh, uh, um, grade five history content, you then introduce the learners to the content of the Nile River and how it had influenced the settlement of people in Egypt. You're then going to talk about why is the Nile River, why were, were the banks overflowing and how did the, the how did it influence the people who live there? Why did they they like to plow? Uh, 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 they plowed a lot because they were actually uh, staying closer to the Nile River and the Nile River would 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 overflow, which which made the banks of the river actually more fertile. So if the the, the banks of the river in the past, remember colleagues, um, uh, the, 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 the people who lived in the past, they, they relied more on the food that they grew themselves. So the Nile River was very important and key to the people of Egypt because they were able to make or to plant their own food and to survive because they were closer to the river and the river which was fertile and the soil was actually giving them the food that they needed to, 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 to survive on. So that introduction to the, uh, the importance of the Nile River and how it overflowed and how it actually influenced the people to settle closer to the Nile River. It's very key that you're going to cover that. And then in terms of how the people lived in ancient Egypt, you're just going to introduce that one bullet that speaks to the social structures. Now where you're introducing the pharaohs, you're introducing the different people, the peasants and uh, the slaves. And what were the, the jobs that different uh, people or different social structures were able to do in the in, in, in the lives of, of, of people who lived in Egypt? And then between week six and week, uh, week four and week six, you then go into the beliefs. What are the what are the things the gods of e of Egypt? What are the things that they believed in? What religion did they 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 subscribed to? What are the things that they they believed? Why why was the king taken? Uh, uh, why were the pharaohs? Why were the pharaohs actually taken as their gods? Why were they treated with special care? So you you're going to cover the the pharaohs. You're going to cover about the 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 spun. You're going to talk about the the pyramids. The importance of pyramids. Why were the the, the pharaohs actually uh, uh, buried in those um, uh, pyramids. You're going to talk about why is the spin, the spin was used for what? What were the things that was important, especially for the spins as well as the temples? Mainly it was to actually uh, support uh, the people or the commoners or the people they would call them the peasants, the people who had nothing in the community or people who were the lower class. So the, those are the things that needs to be uh, covered when you cover between week four and week six. And you're also going to speak about the hieroglyphics, the importance of hieroglyphics. Why was the, the hieroglyphics important in terms of documenting, uh, 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 making sure that the finances of the Pharaoh were, were recorded? Remember, this was the language that was used in Egypt during those, those years. But remember, there was another language which was a spoken language which most te textbooks don't talk about, which is Dominican. Please make sure that you also introduce that type of uh, um, a language that was used in Egypt and also you're going to talk about the mathematics. I think the reason why the mathematics was important, it was mainly because they needed to count. Remember when they were plowing and, and having crops and having to pay the pharaohs uh, some, some dividends and, and paying rent to the, to, to the pharaohs, they needed to know how to count. So the mathematics was also important and then 
Uh, what is uh, important also in the grade uh, five content is the introduction of astrology, which is another link with NSTEC. Astrology was important because this is, this is when the Egyptian actually came up with a calendar. Remember, the calendar has 365 days. That concept of 365 days actually originated from Egypt when they were actually uh, uh, going through the concept of the, uh, the the astrology. The astrology, they will look at the sun and they will calculate as to how long is the winter and how long is the night, how long is the day. So all those concepts of uh, day and night, the, the, the different seasons that we've got and coming to the calendar as well. So the astrology that you need to cover as a grade five teacher is very key. And then the last one is week seven, where you're going to talk about the medicine which was used in, in Egypt, the different plants. Remember, people in Egypt, they, they relied more on their environment. What was what were the types of medicine that they've used? The physicians, what were the things that they they, they actually discovered? The, the physiology as well as the clinical examination. You will remember colleagues that this is whereby they, will, uh, they, they discovered uh, how to heal uh, a wound. They will also discover how to mummify the bodies. So uh, this is where now they will talk about anatomy of a person. They will talk about how we are built and how can we preserve the body of the Pharaoh in order for it to, to last longer when they had buried it in uh, uh, um, in terms of uh, when they buried it in, 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 in the pyramids. So this is the content that the colleagues need to introduce the learners to. And week eight, we then only do a case study of how was the tomb of Tutankhamun was discovered. We're going to talk about who discovered it, when was it discovered and why was it discovered. On the presentation which I shared with the colleagues, there is a link that takes you to a, it's like a video where you can take the the the, the learners to 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 actually uh, a storytelling of how was the tome actually discovered. So please, colleagues, the, the 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 link that I shared last week about the content of grade five. Please click on there. There is even an interaction. It's an interactive activity that you can give, sort of like a questionnaire that you can give to the learners before they can actually watch the video. So. If you give the learners those questions, by the time they watch the video, they already can look out for the things that are actually uh, asked on that interaction, uh, interactive uh, uh, video. So please, when you get to week eight, make sure that you cover that content quite well. And then uh, last but not least, you're then going to talk about what were the discoveries which were revealed about ancient Egypt, uh, uh, Egyptian society which is now going to be week nine, where we'll talk about the, the hieroglyphics and, and all those things. So you're going to consolidate now the content which was meant for the history. And last but not least, in week 10, you are going to administer a test, which is a source-based uh, test colleagues. And this source-based test colleagues um, is out of 30. It must have a definition of concepts and also is going to have extracts because remember sources needs to be there and you're now going to introduce, make sure that the learners are actually having the content that they supposed to have. And then um, last but not least, you're going to uh, go to the grade, is it grade six content? I'm sorry about that colleagues. <sighs> You know, we've got uh, 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 these uh, uh, technologies that always. Uh, uh, I'm sorry about that, colleagues. It was a disturbance uh, of these adverts that are that keeps on popping on the screen that always want to disturb the presentation. I'm sorry about that. Um, in the grade uh, six content, we then cover, uh, like I said, geography, we cover weather and climate in uh, of 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 the world remember in grade five we're covering weather and climate of south africa and then in grade six we cover weather and climate of the world first and foremost like in the other two grades we start by giving term two's content to the learners or, or the summary of what we have given them in terms of the formal assessment we then give them the feedback how they performed we do the corrections 
like I said, colleagues, the content which is done in the grade is going to be a build up. The latitude and the longitude they will, they will deal with when they get to grade eight. So it's important that the learners, they consolidate their, their knowledge in the, in the lower grades. And also you're going to introduce the topic of the weather and climate or around the world. And then you're going to give them a link, like I said earlier on, you give them a link of the content which they've covered in grade five, where you, they now differentiate what uh, the difference between weather and climate, which I already alluded to. And I also spoke about that we describe it with uh, either it is hot, mild or cold climate. And you're also going to introduce them to uh, uh, temperature, two different types of maps with, which are indicating the temperatures in January of the, of, of, of the world. Uh, different regions will have different temperatures in January and then you also going to give them a world map which is actually showing them the temperatures of different areas or different regions in July. You're also going to speak about dry areas as well as the wet areas of the world and how are those places influenced in terms of the annual rainfall patterns. So you also touch so the content that is done in grade six is actually a built up of what and I hope the colleagues are now they can now see the link between grade five and the grade six. Why is it important that you must not create content gaps as a teacher who was teaching in grade five? Because once these topics or subtopics are not covered by a previous grade, then the next teacher who must take the learners is going to have a difficulty because those learners are going to have a problem in terms of content gaps that are going to be that were created by the previous teacher. And then between week five and week six, we deal with tropical rainforest. Where are they located on Earth in terms of where are they located in the world? What is the climate in the tropical rainforest in terms of the temperatures, in terms of the rain patterns, uh, rainfall patterns? When, do, when do they receive more rain or they don't receive more rain? And then we're going to speak about the natural vegetation, which uh, is actually found in the tropical rainforest. And we're going to talk about uh, deforestation, which is the cutting of trees that we like to do as people. What are the, what are the consequences that actually can be terminated or that can result from cutting off of trees. So it's important colleagues that we give those learners the case study and then they engage with it so that they can also be responsible citizens and see the importance of actually keeping our our our, our plants or, or our, our trees uh, surviving in, in, in different regions. And then between week six and week seven, we cover the hot desert, same thing that we did with tropical rainforest. We, we, we give them a map where we are going to show the learners where are the hot desert actually located or uh, where are they uh, where are they found on a world map. The location is important. We also speak about the climate in a hot desert where the temperatures of different regions or different uh, continents uh, actually found. What are the rain? Uh, rainfall patterns in 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 a, in in a hot desert and what are the natural vegetation what type of plants survive mainly in a hot desert and how do the people that live in a desert how do they actually survive how do they uh, make a daily a daily living what are the what type of people live in those particular regions and then between week 8 we then look at the coniferous uh, forest same thing with the previous uh, content. We look at where are they located on Earth in a world map. We give them a map of the world and they need to identify in which content in, in which continent are these uh, forests are located. We also need to uh, speak about the climate in the in the coniferous forest. We talk about the rainfall. When are the annual the monthly averages in different uh, uh, in those areas? What type of rain do they get? Do they get summer rain or are they getting the winter rains? And then in week nine you consolidate and then lastly in week 10 you give them a, a, a formal assessment test. Remember the formal assessment test the minimum mark it must be 40 marks. Now colleagues in the history, we then going to remember in grade four, term one, they do a content of local 
areas where they introduce the learners as to what are the changes that happened over time of a particular area. That is a build up of this particular content because remember in grade four, they talk about simple knowledge. They talk about information from pictures. For instance, they can take a picture of, 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 of Soweto and look how did Soweto improve? How did it change over time? Remember colleagues, the history is the study of changes that happen of a particular area over time. So in grade four, they, they look about the, the, the physical features that we can see. They're not really going in depth with the content. So it's important that the grade four teacher lay the foundation so that when they get to grade six, the learners are actually a solid because now in grade six, they're going to now take the information, the changes. Remember in the past, how were people governed? It was through the policy of apartheid. And now how did they then change? How was the transition from apartheid to the democracy that we have in South Africa? So. It starts from the work which is done in the grade four. It builds up to the work that the grade six are going to actually cover, where now they are now introducing the learners to the concept of, of democracy. They're going to talk about uh, our first elections that we have in uh, we had in 1994. They will also introduce the learners to the project, but not really in depth, but they will just tell the learners that uh, There was somebody talking. OK, they will introduce the learners to the political parties, the importance of voting. Why do we vote? And they will also speak about the purpose of the Constitution. Just like in the grade uh, five content, I shared a link, a Google Drive link colleagues, which has videos that actually uh, explain the content of what is democracy. What was what was different during the apartheid and what we see now in a democratic uh, governed uh, uh, country. So what is the difference between the two? What is the difference between the concept as well? So if you can click on that particular link colleagues, you'll find activities, you'll find the presentation, you'll even find the videos which are actually unpacking this particular uh, content. It actually even take uh, the, the the learners. There is a, a video that shows the learners how the first democratic. What was it, what was the excitement? You know when the people were lining up and how long were the queues when people wanted to vote and who was the first president who actually won those elections and the importance. Why was it important for South Africa to actually go cast their vote their votes in 1994? And they can also you can take it further where learners now can compare with what they've seen on the video and what they experience with uh, uh, nowadays. Are the people still going out there to vote and why do they think that people are no longer voting and why? So you can have a nice debate with the learners when you can actually show them the video. Uh, also in the video, there's another video that discussed about the constitution, who developed the constitution, why was it important for the South Africans to have the constitution, what are the, uh, the injustices that are actually addressed on, in yeah. our constitutions. And so that content between week one and week three colleagues yeah, is very important. Mr. Gubayi, there is a colleague who's actually interjecting with the presentation. Interjecting with the colleague is ma'am. It's TF. The colleague with their mic on, could you kindly mute yourself? Did you find them, sir? Colleagues, if if people cannot uh, behave in 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 a, in, a, in a workshop, I will ask Mr. Gubayi to remove you from the workshop because we can't have Mem Tabisile from Faranani. Faranani Primary, you are actually disrupting the the presentation. Thank you, colleagues. I'm sorry about that. I had to go and search. You know, we have to. It's like we are in a pond. We need to find the fish that is misbehaving in, in, in a pond. So please, colleagues, we started with the meeting etiquette. It, we cannot still be having uh, colleagues from Faranani dis disrupting the meeting by having their mics on. Remember, colleagues, we have 
different people in different places, so everybody must have an audible uh, presentation, colleagues. And then in week uh, between week six and week uh, week four and week six, we're then going to take the learners to the role of the parliament and the importance of rules and laws. And then we're also going to look at the justice system. What, uh, what are the things that are included in our justice system? Is there any equality in terms of the laws of South Africa? And then last but not least in that week, we're going to cover a case study by Fatima Mia. So please colleagues, make sure that you cover everything that is highlighted on the ATP. Uh, in week seven, you're going to look at the case study that speaks about Pius Langa and the constitutional, uh, uh, the constitutional court. What was his role in the constitutional court? And then in week eight, we'll talk about the children's charter and the rights and responsibilities of the learners. It's very key because this content colleagues, it links up nicely with the content they deal with in the life skills, as well as the import uh, the important national symbols which we we are actually still observing uh, since 1994 which is the coat of arm the importance of it the different uh, symbols that are there and then as well as the national flag as well as the national anthem so please colleagues make sure that you cover everything and then in week 10 you are then going to allow the learners to actually have a biography uh, to write a biography about one of the leaders that contributed to the democracy. I'd like to stop now and find out from the colleagues in terms of the ATP that I interacted with. Is there any question of something perhaps that the colleagues might say they, uh, they need clarity on? Mr. Gubai, do we have anyone with a Madam question? Mandini, I don't yes. see any hand icon from the platform. Does it mean that everything is still going according to plans? I believe so. The colleagues are still fine. OK, yeah. so colleagues, I have outlined what are the topics that needed to be covered in terms of the of 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 the social science from grade four to grade six. And I went slower so that the colleagues who might it might be their first time teaching the content can have an understanding of why. Remember, colleagues, today is the content discussion. So we need to discuss some of the bullets so that the colleagues are clear with what needs to be to happen. And they also need to remember that we should not rely on a textbook. So it's important that we go and research, we go and find more information. Hence, we always constantly providing the colleagues with resources other than that one that we get from the textbooks that we have. Now, colleagues, this is just a reminder. I think I've covered most of the program of assessment. We both know, we all know that in the three grades, uh, we have, in fact, in grade, let me start with grade four. Grade four in both discipline, they are writing a control test, which is a source based. Learners must have concepts to define. They must have it's a source based and it must include paragraph writing. That includes both discipline, geography as well as the history and the minimum minimum mark in grade uh, four. It has not changed. It still remains at 25 marks. And then in grade five, like I said earlier on, in geography, they are going to have a project of, of, of observing the weather. And then for history, they are going to have a control test, which is definition of concept, source based as well as paragraph writing. And the topic is on ancient Egypt, which I just alluded to on the previous slide. And then in grade six, uh, geography, it's a control test where learners can be tested on the concept definitions and they can also be tested on source based uh, uh, test and they can also you can also include paragraph writing and that content will be covering climate and vegetation around the world. And last but not least is a project that I just alluded on the previous slide, the one on democracy where learners are going to select one of the democratic leaders that contributed positively to our uh, democracy. Uh, just to remind the grade fours, the minimum mark in terms of the formal assessment is 30 marks. And then in grade uh, six, uh, the minimum mark, it's still remaining at 
40 marks. So there is no change in terms of the program of assessment in terms of what are the mark allocations required for this term. Just to remind the colleagues in terms of the cognitive levels, remember the lower order question should always remain at 30 percent. Middle order should always be at 50 percent and the high order questions should always be at 20 percent. Okay. So make sure that your question paper is actually uh, balanced. Uh, I'm sorry, colleagues, I need to uh, surf again for whoever. Ebuleni, could you kindly switch off your mic? Thank you, colleagues. Uh, okay. please. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um, and then if I continue, colleagues, the next slide is addressing the challenges that uh, myself and Mr. Gubai are observing when we are actually going for a school visit. The reason why we share these challenges is so that if you have not been visited, you are aware of what are the things that should not be found in your file or should not be found in learner books that maybe you might not be aware of. The, we shared provincial lesson plans with all the colleagues in the district, but to our big surprise, we find that they are not utilized. They are not dated with that pencil. Colleagues are not using a pencil to write reflection. So therefore, they are just wild elephants which are sitting in their file. So please, colleagues, let us use this provincial lesson plan because remember the province has used money to develop these uh, 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 lesson plans and when they come to for a school visit they want to see these provincial lesson plans actually being utilized we then expect that you take the provincial lesson plan and do your own personal lesson plan remember your lesson preparation is going to differ from the teacher next door this can be done in a book form. This can be in a, fo in a form of a file. This can be in uh, any way you want. We don't prescribe how your lesson preparation. In the past, it was called, I think schools with the foundation phase will remember, it was called an observation book where you write briefly explain what the teacher will do and briefly explain what the learners are going to do. So please colleagues, when we get to a school, let us find the provincial lesson plan being utilized and also from the provincial lesson plan, have your own personal lesson preparation. It is very uh, hard, uh, heartbreaking when we get to a school, we only find the provincial lesson plan, which means that the teacher goes to the class without any preparation. They don't know what to teach because remember, the provincial lesson plans, they are broad. For instance, in the grade six activity, it was saying uh, teachers must go out and measure a swimming pool. Remember when province are actually uh, drafting these lesson plans, they're drafting for the entire uh, country. But however, in your school, you do not have a swimming pool. So which pool are you going to actually go and measure? So do your own personal one because you are only going to highlight what you as a teacher in your classroom are doing. You're also going to have an opportunity to go and collect the resources that you need from your library. So lesson preparation is key colleagues. And then we also find that some of the colleagues when they deliver the content, they do not stick to the RATP that we shared, which I just uh, discussed on the previous page. Please colleagues, let us make sure that we stick to the RATP, not the textbook that we have. I know there's a famous textbook that starts with the letter P. I'm not going to say what it is, but the colleagues, I'm sure they are all laughing where they are because they know which textbook that they like. It starts with the P, it's blue and white in color, but they just want to be the slave of this particular textbook. So please, colleagues, let us refrain from uh, um, following the textbook from page one till the last page. Let us rather develop our own lessons. Yes, Textbooks must be used as resources, but let us not follow it verbatim from page one till the last page. And also colleagues, we shared the tracking tools. Tracking tools can also pace you. 
Other schools, they call it a pace setter. Other schools, they call it a temp planner. Other schools, because it indicates how many written activities should be in the learner book. It also indicates how much time, time on task, how much time must you spend in a particular topic. So curriculum tools are very key, colleagues. And we need to also highlight this. These curriculum tools must be uh, actually completed as you are teaching. So if you are teaching today, you tick and you write the date that this particular topic has let us uh, has been covered. Let us not have a situation when HOD is now supposed to be submitting the curriculum tracking tools to the district and then everybody saying it's curriculum tools, curriculum tracking, tra you know, cu curriculum coverage as if the teachers don't know that these tools is a continuous thing. So curriculum tracking should be done on a daily basis as you are teaching. The tool is always being completed so that by the end of the term, when the, the HOD is asking for these tools, it's already done. It's ready for submission. Also, colleagues, we find that there is no evidence of uh, uh, resources that we are sharing with the colleagues. Remember, like we always say, when we share those links, like I spoke about the links, the two links of the resources for grade five history as well as uh, grade six history content. We would like when we get to the school and see some of those presentations in your in your in your file. It shows that whatever resources, if there's a map that we have shared in the in, in, in the in the presentation, you are using it. It actually it, it, it encourage us as the officials to say, you know, whatever that we are trying to do to assist the teachers, they are actually using it in a school situation. And then the next one, it says it's a humble request. Like I said on the previous slide, make sure that the curriculum tracking tool is completed as you go along. And also colleagues, the headings that are appearing on this curriculum tool should be evident in the learner book. Let us refrain from writing activity one, activity two, activity three without giving the headings. The headings assist the HOD as well. Remember the HOD, some of the HODs are not subject specialist. So if you're just writing activity one and get to the story and you don't give the heading to the HOD, it becomes difficult for the HOD to track how far are you in terms of the curriculum coverage. So if on a daily basis, you give the date, you write the heading, then you start your teaching so that where do these headings come from? They come from the curriculum tracking tool, the educator reporting tool, which we've shared with the colleagues. And then second but not least, it says kindly make sure that you give a summary note to the learners. It is it, it is heartbreaking to get to a school and then you open the, pay, the, the, the learner book and the first thing you come across, it's true, false, true, false, true, false. And you don't know where, where does this true and false come from? Give learners information. Start your lessons with vocabulary words. If you are talking about Nelson Mandela, give them a little story that speaks about Mandela before you can ask the questions about Nelson Mandela. Social science colleagues is a source based. There must be a source that precedes the activity. You can't just do activities only. There are no notes. In history, we used to call it in my times. Now I'm actually giving my age. We used to call it an addendum. You need to give the learners the addendum before they can answer the question. So without the addendum, you cannot answer the question. Same thing with the learners. Give them the summary notes. Summarize the notes, give it to the learners so that they have a background so that even when they study on a later stage colleagues, they are able to refer back and they can be assisted by whoever is at home who is able to assist them. And then uh, the last bullet, it says program of assessment uh, guidelines, which was uh, uh, shared with the colleagues last term, which is circular two of 2022, which was indicating that the content which was supposed to be assessed for term two. It was content from term. It was content from term one and term two together. And hence in the grade, if I'm not mistaken, it was grade. Uh, um, there was one grade that was only had two columns, but the other grades had actually four columns where it was showing term one content, term two content. This is where it was motivated, saying in that circular it says the content which must be assessed 
it must come from term one and some content must come from term two to make up the formal assessment for term two. So please colleagues, when we went for school visit, we found out that colleagues are only testing the content of term two only. You are actually contravening with what the, con the, the, the secular is saying. When the program of assessment is shared with the colleagues, please stick to it. So for term three, we only assess content that we are only going to teach in term three, nothing else. But when it comes to term four, we are going to assess content that we are currently teaching in term three, plus the content that we are going to teach in term four. So please colleagues, let us not uh, actually contravene with that. Before I start with the project, is there any question? Anyone with the hand? Like I said, colleagues, this is a content discussion. I cannot be discussing alone. I need colleagues to ask questions, to engage me with what I discussed, to ask if there is topics maybe perhaps that are not clear so that myself and Mr. Gubayu, we can uh, guide the colleagues. I'm going to stop now and see if there is anyone with a hand up or any question or is everything clear? Mary Manzini, I don't see any hand here. Maybe to advise educators that they can use the hand icon or just put a, a note from the meeting chat if they are not comfortable in asking questions. Colleagues, this is a discussion kind of a meeting like Mary Manzini has indicated. If you have a question, please don't wait until the end of the meeting. We are giving you the opportunity to do that. Use the meeting chat. Just type whatever question that you have. I'm in the background. I'm able to see whose hand is up and whose message is coming from. Then I will then uh, liaise with Mem Manzini to say there's a question from the platform. So you are encourage, encourage colleagues to to participate and 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 have whatever question that you have. Um, I, I remember one said there's no question that is foolish. All questions are questions. There's no question that is out of order. So you are invited to please ask any question that you have. Uh, thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank you, Tatane uh, Gubai. Um, yes, like like the, 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 the is it the title of our workshop. It was content discussion. We are discussing. It's not lecture room. I'm a bit worried if I speak alone. I'd like the colleagues if there is something they would like or when I'm going too fast or when they want some clarity on certain things, stop me so that I stop and, 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 and clarify. And uh, uh, like rightfully what Mr. Kubai said, we need to interact with one another so that as you are going to be covering the content, you are quite clear with what are the things that are um, actually required. I'm going to go back to the presentation. Now I'm going to take the grade five uh, colleagues to the project uh, that they need to administer. Remember we said a uh, grade five geography this term we are having a project and our project. Firstly, we need to understand what is a project for both grades. It says this is a planned task that is given to learners whereby the learners need to apply the knowledge that they've gained in class. Remember, in uh, a geography, they are going to deal with uh, uh, what is weather, weather in South Africa, the climatic weather in South Africa, and they're going to now have to record. So this knowledge that they've gained, where you spoke about temperatures, you spoke about precipitation, you spoke about cloud cover, they now have to apply that knowledge. And then it says a project needs to be monitored by the teacher on a regular basis. So as a teacher, it's not a project that you must just give the learners and so go go and record uh, weather for 14 days and bring it back to class. No, it needs to be monitored by the teacher on a regular basis. It is a practical task done over a period of time, meaning that we don't do it once. It's not once and then it's done. It needs to start at the beginning of the term. On the previous slide, it says in week four, we're now going to actually start with our project. Project makes a uh, content more concrete to the learners. Now learners, they know how to, which instrument to actually use for, for measuring the temperatures. They know uh, the, the, the instrument which is used for, 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 for the wind to see the wind direction in which direction is the wind blowing. So they now going to start 
and do it practically so that whatever that they've gained abstract, they're now going to do it uh, uh, concrete. They're going to actually practice in class. It says a project involved investigation, meaning that they need to go and collect information from home and then they're going to bring it back and design their project in class. Allow the learners to build the models. In the case of the grade uh, five, allow the learners to make those weather instruments. They must build those 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 models. They must compile the report. When they compile the report, the temperatures that they're going to record on on a daily basis, it must be compiled. And then lastly, it says they must write an essay. They must co consolidate what they've learned by writing a paragraph to say what what in, on which day was actually hotter and which day was was warmer. And then they can even make a poster and all this together is actually it can form a presentation. So everything together, it can actually be the project that can be put together. Information about the project can, you can also collect it from different sources that you've got. We can collect it from people, we can collect it from pictures, we can collect it from writing, we can even collect it from uh, 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 projects or objects that we've got. And then the other thing that we need to remember, colleagues, let us not forget uh, that we have a concept which is called English across curriculum. So every concept before we start teaching, if we are talking about geography, let us not forget to introduce learners to the geographical concept. In this case, uh, it will be precipitation, weather, climate, uh, uh, temperatures. What do you mean by those? So that learners are familiar with before you can actually want them to record. When you're saying pre precipitation, the rain, the snow slick, the hail that we've got, what weather that falls from the sky, what, what are the things that falls from the sky? All of those, they form part of precip uh, precipitation. The weather, it's actually referring to uh, the atmospheric condition over a short period of time, and it can also be measured in terms of whether it's hot or cold outside, the dryness of the storm, as well as the climate is now the weather condition which is now prevailing or it is measured over a longer period of time. And the, 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 the temp, te, uh, temperature is actually referring how hot or how cold outside the temperature is. So possibly this, this is a possible uh, a project that you can uh, administer with the learners, but remember colleagues, uh, 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 in the absence that you don't have, you can follow exactly like we have indicated here. On the first bullet it says, uh, I think that first part is actually, uh, uh, it says if it's not done at the beginning of the term, it can actually lead up to a mismanagement of the project because now as as the, as, as the teacher, you might not be able to uh, manage or, or, or monitor the project on time. So time on task is very key. Remember in the grade uh, in the grade five, we are given two hours as well as grade six, we are given two hours for the project. So time on task is very key colleagues. And then like it says on the next bullet, it speaks about the policy document, which is the CAPS policy document that explains how this needs to be done, how much time it must be spent on, on, on a particular bullet. And it also speak about, uh, uh, like, like I spoke about the time that we have. Also colleagues, it says possible, uh, um, Possible uh, activity you can do with the learners. Learners can actually make the instrument that we use to measure the temperature or the distribution of, 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 of rainfall, which is the rain gauge. There are some of the textbooks which have the instructions of how these instruments can be made. And you also allocate, it says learners must be allocated responsibility. If they are working in a group, everybody must have a share not all learners are equal in terms of the of 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 the of the instrument so therefore if they can work together they all going to have a mark so they can either make a thermometer they can make a rain gauge they can make a windcock so whatever instrument that they are going to 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 to, to actually uh, make together and then the next bullet talks talks about it says learners with access to the instrument uh, should use them to record if if perhaps they've got money you can buy the thermometer you can actually go outside on a daily basis and use it with the learners whether now the learners are going to record uh, uh, their findings because as as they are using the instrument they are going to record their own findings as well also they are going to describe what they are dis uh, what they are observing and then it is also recommended that if you're working as a group make sure that 
you allocate different duties to different learners. And then on this one, colleagues, there are different instrument images that are showing a thermometer and an image that is showing a rain gauge. Those are just some of the examples that you can make, but colleagues can be very creative and, and come up with their own images. Like rightfully I said earlier on, colleagues in the grade five, they are expected to record weather for 14 days. So first of all, a teacher must have a template that is indicating a template where learners can record this weather. It's an example. If you look at this on this side, it says this is an example that you can use whereby learners now need to uh, uh, remember I said the first one they need to make the instrument. Now, if you are uh, you don't have resources at your school, learners can draw this table in your class whereby they are now going to use this table to record the weather on daily basis over a period of two weeks. And then afterwards, you are going to give an opportunity to the learners to write a, a short description or a paragraph where learners are going to describe a descriptive observation. What are the things that they are observing on the weather on different days? Is it changing or it, 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 it stays the same? And then you are also going to allow the learners to draw the, 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 the symbols, the weather symbols that we've got. Uh, for example, they can give you the weather they've observed today. Was there any wind? Was there any cloud cover? Was it clear sky? So they need to draw those symbols. You will see that on the examples here, we've got the temperatures, we've got the average temperature, we've got the, the, the cloud cover or the weather symbols that shows uh, whether it, uh, the precipitation, was it clear sky or was it a cloud cover or, or it, was, it was sunny? And then lastly, you're going to allow the learners to describe how the weather affected people on a particular uh, area or in a particular day. For instance, we can take maybe Saturday in this instance. The, the, the highest was at 52, but the lowest was at 37. Now you say to the learners, take uh, the, the, the temperatures and um, the temperatures and the rainfall of Saturday. Write for me a short paragraph, but you can see that on a Saturday it was raining. It was raining uh, very bad. Now, write for me a short paragraph describing the human activities. How were the people dressed on that particular day? Was there a need to have an umbrella? Was there a need to just uh, stay outside and, and, and enjoy the sun? No, the learners are now going to engage you based on the information, the application of knowledge that they've gained. Also colleagues, possible activity. This is an extract from one of the uh, activity we got from the internet, uh, how the weather affects our daily lives. I'm not going to read everything verbatim as it is, but simply it says that uh, the outdoor activities that the people do when we are outside and how do we then uh, make sure that uh, we, we, we carry on with our daily lives. Is it possible for the people uh, uh, to be outside and selling maguinha on the pavement when it rains or how does it affect their energy? How does it affect the people, the, the, the people who are selling on the street when, when it rains? So it, such things need to be uh, included when they write their paragraph. Those fishermen, will they be able to go to the, to the, to the nearest river and, and fish for, the, for, for whatever that they're looking for there? Or it's going to be, if it's a dry, if it's very hot and it's not raining, how is it going to affect the natural vegetation in that particular area? So allow the learners to write a paragraph by selecting one of the one of, 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 of the temperatures that you that we have or, or you have recorded. So it will differ. So as a teacher, you need to select one day so that you can also have a memo. Remember when you give this uh, 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 this for uh, this project to your to your to your HOD to monitor, you might not have a memo in terms of paragraph writing. But once you have selected a particular day and you have recorded also as a teacher, you have recorded uh, the temperature for that particular day and the wind direction and the presentation, you can then create a memo for yourself so that different learners do not write different paragraphs for you, but you are guided as a teacher as to how are you going to mark it. Now, I gave you an example, colleagues, that you can give a mark for paragraph writing. The paragraph writing can be out of five marks. You can give a mark for 14 days. 
uh, recording, you can give it seven marks. So it can be half a mark for each day. So that uh, remember recording is like collection of data. It falls under the low order questions. And then the writing of paragraph is going to fall under the high order questions, which is going to be five marks. And then the middle order question, we are now going to go to the next one, the possible uh, 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 activity you can do. You can download any map that is showing uh, weather focus of, uh, of South Africa in, uh, in different uh, provinces. Then you create questions based on that particular, uh, particular uh, weather uh, map that you've got. Those are the ex examples you can use uh, whereby the learners will uh, look at the, at the map and interpret the data, which a province had the highest temperature, which province was sunny and which province had rain, which pro province had, was cloudy. So you can create, you can take out from any textbook or you can take out from the internet any of the textbooks that you've got and you can let the learners and then you give them also a mark from that. So this type of when learners are handling data, it will be application of knowledge because they need to know how to interpret information using the their maps. And then colleagues, uh, this one I'm not going to spend much on it because I already clarify some of the concept on it. It says time on task, it's two hours, and then it speaks about that learners need to be monitored as they are uh, recording their observations. And you need to be clear as a teacher in terms of the content before the project can actually start. And you need to also communicate with your learners in terms of the due date. When do you want the learners to actually submit the project? And there is no need for you to actually repeat yourself as as long as you have given them a program of assessment as a teacher and they know exactly when is the project and on a daily basis you keep on reminding them and make sure also that you communicate with the parents because sometimes parents can be vital uh, in terms of assisting the learners with gathering of information especially they use their work uh, resources to get some of the information for the learners so please communicate with your with your parents so that the parents can assist the learners in terms of making sure that the project is submitted on time. Uh, like I said, these are the different resources of visual. Uh, these are the things that or, or, or sources that we can refer to when we are collecting this data. We can use visual materials uh, to show the learners, for instance, they can collect data. The, the maps, different temperatures can be collected from newspaper. They can even use their smartphones. They can listen to the radio. They can watch the news uh, as well from TV where they are showing us the different every news that plays on, on, on TV. They show the different temperatures as well as the rainfall and the wind direction on on a daily basis so please let us use the the platforms or the sources that we've got in order for us to 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 to, to enrich the knowledge that we've got now colleagues i said uh we can also allow the learners to observe uh the 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 the, 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 the weather pattern record it and then describe the pattern which is what i just spoke about on the previous slide this is whereby now the learners are going to look at uh, how are the, these uh, digital uh, uh, devices that we've got which i spoke about in the in the previous slide and then uh, also we're going to allow the learners to write a paragraph where learners are now they can uh, like i said you can uh, select a particular day and then you allow the learners to write a paragraph of about five sentences where whereby they're going to describe how the weather affected them either positively or negatively on a particular or a specified day. Now, colleagues, this is just uh, an example of learners now. They have gathered the information from home. They come to your classes on a daily basis. Remember, colleagues, we said two hours. So this two hours is spent in class. So they've collected the information from home. Now they come to class on a daily basis. You make sure that these learners, they, they record, they do their reporting in class uh, uh, by, collect, by completing their table. They bring the notes that they've, they've, they wrote at home and then you create a space for the learners that they can be able to do this. And in a, in a formal way, you make sure that they transfer whatever that they've collected at home or whatever that their parents had shared with them. Uh, uh, you then allow them to transfer it into their learner books. And then also remember colleagues that each person or each learner must record in their own uh, writing book because each child is going to get a mark at the end of 
of, 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 of the term. And this colleagues must be done in a controlled environment to make sure that the learners are getting what uh, needs to be done. Last but not least is a project for grade six. Mr. Gubayi, do we have any question uh, on the platform? In terms of the grade five uh, activity. Mr. Gubayi? Hello, ma'am Manzini. Is there any hand, any question regarding uh, the grade five uh, uh, um, project? And I must say before before Mr. Kubai can 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 um, respond to that, I must say, colleagues, when we go to school, we don't want to only see the recording of the weather. We've broken it up, whereby the learners are going to get a project of making the instrument. We, we also said a mark can be allocated out of that. Maybe it can even be five marks. And then the other one is whereby you're going to give learners a map where they can interpret uh, the map. And then they can also write a paragraph how the weather affected them. They can also make a poster whereby the learners can collect uh, different pictures, for instance, of how natural vegetation survive in their area. For instance, they can cut different plants that are planted in a particular area and they can write a short uh, a caption underneath it as to how is that particular plant surviving in that particular area with the type of, of, of weather that they've got. And lastly, but not least, they then recording the recording, which is the, the lower order question, which is can be five, uh, seven marks. So middle order questions must be 13 and um, lower order question seven marks and the, the higher order question can be five marks, which is going to give you a nice 30 marks. So the 30 marks is not only on the recording of the weather for 14 days and then you leave it there. Mr. Gubai, do we still have no hand and no one with the question regarding the grade five content or grade five project? You know what, ma'am? It looks yes, like sir. you are doing uh, so well. Uh, I don't see, you know, any hand and I indicated clearly that they should maybe if they are not comfortable with, you know, talking, mm -hmm. they can just, you know, use the meeting chat. Even on the meeting chat, there is absolutely nothing. It's only one colleague who is actually looking for the register, which I always keep on posting. But hey, nonetheless, let, I don't have any. Everything is still fine. Yeah, now let me fine. take grade six uh, colleagues to the project that they need to do. Uh, okay. Same thing with the grade five. We start with, um, is it vocabulary word, English across curriculum? Let us not forget to introduce our learners to the concepts that they need to know before they can start with the uh, 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 historical concepts that they need to know before they can start with the project. In this instance, democracy must be defined. A biography, learners need to know what is a biography. Constitution, voting, as well as political parties. So please share the con uh, the historical concept with the learners. Sorry, ma'am. Yes, sir. Uh, I have a response from Lebohang Molele. She is saying thank you very much, madam, for the clarification of the project. Oh, thank you so much to ma'am. And I hope the colleagues will have a, 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 they will enjoy doing this project with the learners. In fact, we are actually expecting that there will be greater performance because learners are assisted by the teacher on a daily basis in the classroom and it can be unpacked so nicely so that the learners can perform better. Thank you so much, ma'am, for that. Uh, let me take the grade six uh, colleagues to the to their project. Like I said, we start with English across the curriculum. You introduce the learners to the concept and you make sure that they understand it before you can continue with uh, 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 your, to your, your, your topic. Uh, what's important is the introductory lesson where you are going to share with the, with the learners the information on the history of South Africa. Remember, colleagues, before we had democracy, we were 
governed in a different way, which is now the apartheid. Now you're going to introduce the learners uh, uh, how the South African were, were governed before apartheid and how are we governed now in the democratical uh, country uh, after 1994. And then you're going to speak about the, 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 the release of Mandela and how uh, what what is it that he did to contribute to the democracy that, 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 that we had. So it's important that we take them back or as to how was uh, how was the country governed before we can actually expect them to actually continue with the new content that we, we, we have. Allow the learners to identify their own political figures. They must, you mustn't say do a project, a biography on Nelson Mandela. No, they must go out and find out what did Helen um, Sussman do? What did, uh, 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 we've got um, Lillian Goy uh, as one of, of, of the political leaders that contributed. We even have Chris Honey. Why is uh, uh, the, 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 the hospital called Chris Honey? Why is it Chris Honey was actually uh, uh, celebrated as well? So allow the learners to go and find their own political figures that uh, contributed positively in the building of, uh, of democracy. They can even, uh, um, uh, research about Ndadema Ponya who brought change in, 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 in Soweto. What is it that he did during the apartheid? So they can go and look out for the political figures that have contributed in the changes of South Africa. Also assist the learners to get additional sources uh, uh, that they can bring to the classes. In most of the school, there were these colorful books. It's an encyclopedia. It has different bright colors. Allow it, bring it to class allow the learners to read the stories of, 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 of different leaders that you've got. The Helen Sussman, what did uh, uh, Jan Smart do in, 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 in terms of, and, and De Klerk, what was the contribution of Ndade De Klerk in terms of liberating the people of South Africa? Was there any contribution he has made? So allow the learners to look at the previous leaders before democracy and what were the things that they did. Fatima Mia, you you know, you go and, 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 and allow them to go in and read stories on, on, on these people. So his history is a collection of multiple historical sources. So learners must bring different sources in class before they can actually start with their project. And then possible mind map that we can do. Allow learners to, like I said, allow them to choose their, their, their leader and then allow them to collect information from home. But remember, they collect it at home and then they bring it in class. Also, just the same as the grade five, it's two hours. So it must be completed in the classroom. So historical information must be uh, shared with the learners where learners are now going to be they're going to uh, use help one another in order to to realign and you are going to also help them to realign their information they must make notes they must make headings they can cut out a picture of whoever that they want to research about they can uh, uh, write their name of that person and also have an early life for that person when was that person born where were they born how many people were, were, were in their family Family, how did they grow up their early life? How was their education in terms of the schooling? Did they even go to school? What type of, what level of education do they have? And uh, how did they then contribute to the democracy that we, we have in South Africa? And then you then speak about how did they uh, uh, change South Africa? What were the things that they did? And then you're also going to speak about what are the uh, leadership qualities that this person had? Remember I said in grade in grade six, Six, this content li uh, links up nicely with the content which is done in grade four. Remember in grade four, they talk about leaders. They talk about the qualities of a good leader. Now, you're also going to introduce it in the biography where learners are going to, whoever that they, 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 they chose, they must look at the qualities of that person and they must write you a paragraph about that person. What makes that person outstanding? What makes Nelson Mandela to be such an icon that is celebrated in the world? Why are are these people celebrated and then you allow the learners to write a paragraph another possible that's another possible activity that we can do like i said you can allow them to to, to pick nelson mandela but however i would i would i would encourage the learners to write because there are a lot of, of democratical leaders that actually contributed so allow them to 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 to, to choose whoever that they are comfortable with and then 
like I said, education of that person in the early lives in terms of the schooling at home and university. You also uh, allow them to give you information about community, uh, community involvement. What were the activities that they did? Maybe they, they, they were leading the, the, the women's massacre. They were the ones who were, who were, who were actually fighting for the women and, uh, and children uh, uh, biasness that was there in, 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 the, in the country. What were the things that maybe Mama Winnie Mandela was, uh, did in order to liberate the, the women that, we, that, 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 that are in South Africa? So allow them to, 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 to give you com community activities that were there, as well as political beliefs that they believed in, and also allow them to give you uh, whether they are resist, uh, the re resilient approach. What were the things that they did to show that they were actually fighting against the apartheid and they wanted liberation? So this is quite an interesting activity if it's done by the teacher in the classroom instead of just giving it to the learners and allow them to go and, and do it in, uh, in their own way. Yes. Uh, Please mute yourself. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, colleagues. And then the possible uh, 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 frame that you can use for your project, like I said, it can be early life, how they have helped to contribute uh, in the democracy we've got, and then the actions they've made to make a difference in South Africa. And also remember with the qualities of a good leader, the learners can then write a paragraph to you uh, uh, saying what is it that they've learned about the life of this particular person? What, what life history did they learn? Uh, I think uh, that brings me to the end of the project of grade six. Uh, colleagues, uh, before I move on, is there any question in terms of grade six project? Any question? No question. No question. No no. question. And then no. um, last but not least, colleagues, are the announcement and acknowledgement. Uh, colleagues, this is just a reminder. We have shared the link with the colleagues of the IP resources, the resource link. If you click on this link, it will take you to all the resources that you need in the intermediate phase. You can select a subject and social science is also included in that link. So please utilize the link. For instance, I usually get uh, colleagues asking for the lesson plans. Lesson plans are a huge document we cannot share, but colleagues can find it when they go to the link and download it for themselves and actually print it for themselves. And all the presentations, the videos, the maps, the everything that you can need that has to do with social science is actually included on the link. So please, colleagues, if you need anything, use that particular link to get to um, uh, to get to your to 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 the resources that you may need, and then on the second bullet, colleagues would like to a big thanks to the teachers who participated in the cluster Olympiad. About ninety two learners participated on that particular day. Out of the ninety two learners, we had twenty eight learners that are going through uh, to the next round, which is the district round, which will take place on the twenty fourth of August. Uh, it will be at uh, Robertson Primary. Uh, the colleagues that have qualified and, the, and those learners, they already know this, but we are going to share the, the, the memo that is actually inviting them to say they should come and participate to the District Olympiad, which is taking place on the 24th. Please do not forget about that. And then on the next bullet, it says, um, OK, the, the next bullet refers to the resources, which I'm not going to allude to because on the first bullet, it actually speaks about that. And then the program of assessment, we already uh, uh, spoken about it. This is just a reminder. Please make sure that the form of assessment that you are going to administer is in line with what the program of assessment or Thank secular so two of 2020. Um, uh, colleagues, you're gonna you have to forgive me because uh, when there's a colleague that is making noise, uh, I need to find them before because they are actually interjecting. I can't speak when there's somebody speaking as well because they are actually disturbing the presentation. Thank you, our colleague, for muting before I can actually find out who it was. Thank you so much. 
And then I was talking about the program of assessment. A reminder, colleagues, please make sure that you you adhere to the program of assessment which was shared, and uh, it is also in line with uh, Secular Two of twenty of two thousand uh, of twenty twenty two. Please make sure that you administer the correct form of assessment. And then it says uh, annual teaching plan. Oh, there's a, a, a an announcement, colleagues. Uh, DBE, I think it was during uh, uh, the holidays, the first week of the holidays, we shared a link where DBE was actually doing a survey from the teachers to find out whether are they able to cope with uh, curriculum delivery that we've got. And based on that, DBE is having plans to trim the curriculum further because most of the teachers, they, they were complaining, saying the curriculum is too packed. And um, given the time and given the, 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 the challenges that we are faced with, they are unable to complete. But however, the trimming, the plan is on track, but they are proposing that uh, the, the, the trimmed ATP is going to be in place by September, it should be reaching schools. But however, because at the moment we don't have the trimmed ATP, we are going to stick to what we have. So colleagues, please don't think that because we have mediated the RATP that we did today, then it was your waste of time. No colleagues, this is just a proposed thing. And remember, for something to be implemented, it will still be tested. So it's it, 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 the, the trimmed, the new trimmed ATP is just the talks that is on, on the ground. We're just sharing information so that the colleagues, when they hear other colleagues talking about it, it is not new to them. Also colleagues, uh, I spoke about the resources that needs to be downloaded. Like I said, we would like to see those presentations uh, available when we come and see uh, and visit your school in the teacher file and you can refer to them so that we know that all the resources that we are actually having uh, are being utilized. Uh, the, the third bullet speaks to the topic of the DMS. Colleagues, you are reminded, please make sure that you register on the DMS system. This is the system that is being now used by the department for all the training of teachers. Teachers must be on the DMS. You all need to be registered, uh, registered on this system. And then after you register colleague, please make sure that you enroll for the course that is going you are going to attend. Right now we're having a workshop for social science grade six, which is going to take place on the 17th of September. Please make sure that you first register on the DMS and then secondly, you enroll for the course. And lastly, please ask the SMT to approve your attendance because if they don't approve you on the system, then you are going to be one of those educators that will say, I did not get the link or I did not get the data. So if you are registered on the DMS, you will get get the data and if your, 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 your HOD or your principal had approved your registration, then you are definitely going to be accounted to those people. And please colleagues, because it's the DMS, it also counts towards your CPTD points. Remember all the trainings that are offered on the platform of Matthew Goniwe, they are SAIS accredited and they are also CETA accredited. So there are certain points that you are going to get by attending these workshops. So it's a plea colleagues, make sure that you attend all workshops that are given to you. And because also there is money involved behind all these workshops, the department is using a lot of money to, to make sure that the teachers are upskilled and they are trained uh, properly. And a second but not least, we are saying we are inviting all our HOD to a capacitation meeting. Why do we ask all the HODs? The HODs are the key drivers of our curriculum. So we usually go to schools and we find that a monitoring of curriculum in our subject is lagging. So we had, we had felt that we need to capacitate. We need to make sure that we train our HODs so that they know how to monitor the curriculum of social science. So the dates are the 16th and the 18th, as well as on the 23rd of August. In the coming week, we're going to share a hard copy of this memo whereby you will know on which day to, to attend the workshop. So please, if you are an HOD, 
even when your HOD is not amongst us, please invite them to attend the workshop because we're going to train them as to how do we monitor social science? How do you support a social science teacher? Because we all are aware that not all so, uh, 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 HOD are social science specialists. And then last but not least, it's a reminder. There were schools which were selected for pre-moderation in term two. Now it's term three. The province is going to also call the very same schools which were selected last term to submit. Now they are going to submit for the post moderation and that process colleagues is going to take place in September. So the colleagues, what we are saying is please get ready, collect all the, 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 the information that is going to be needed. Make sure that your scripts are there. Make sure that your recording from the raw marks to the to the captured marks on ACSMs, it's, it, it, it's done correctly. Make sure that uh, the learner assessment, the evidence of the task itself is, is available for the for, 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 for moderation, as well as the pre-moderation uh, report that was, that was shared with the school must be available. So please just get yourself ready to those schools that were selected so that we can know that uh, uh, those schools, they are ready by the time we need to collect those things. Those schools are actually uh, ready for that. And before I can close, uh, Mr. Gubai, is there any question? Yes, there's sir. nothing. <laughs> nothing. You have the colleagues today, I'm, they make I'm me worried. scared. They make me scared. You I'm know, I, when, I was at when I was in the classroom, I didn't like when my class was too yeah, quiet. I'm <laughs> concerned as well. I liked, I liked the naughty ones that ask questions. They always say, <laughs> ma'am, you're too fast. And then you yeah. know that you are actually not speaking alone. But um, uh, with that said, uh, I was born, I, I wasn't born to just teach. I was born to inspire. That is me, colleagues. That statement is referring to me. I wasn't just born to teach. I was born to inspire. And I want the colleagues to take this particular quote to heart. You know, when they stand in front of those learners, they must know that they are not born just to teach. They are there to inspire those learners. We are there to inspire others, to change the people we interact with, to never give up. And when we are faced with challenges, we should not see them as challenges. We should rather see them as uh, uh, possibilities. We shouldn't see them as impossible because all things that are impossible, there is the word possible in the word impossible. So with those words, I would like to thank you as my co-pilot at the back. Thank you so much, sir for making sure that uh, the platform is actually taken care of in terms of the technical aspect of the workshop. And also, I would like to give it back to you so that you can close the workshop uh, properly. Back to you, Ndate Kubai. Thank you so much, Memanzini, for taking us through the whole presentation. Uh, of course, it's worrying when you don't get any feedback in a form of uh, raising up of hands from the colleagues. But at the same time, that might also mean that you were clear and educators were able to follow each and everything that you were sharing with us. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for doing such a sterling job. And I'm saying this on behalf of the educators, but I don't want to close this. If educators, if there is one or two educators who want to share their words of appreciation, the, 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 the platform is open for them to say something. And I think there is a hand here from Pumla.